it definitely fits the theme for the the terror that my birthday has caused. <laughs> so what what day is that? It's February eleventh. <laughs> okay, and uh, what's your mother's maiden name? Oh, hey, hey, <laughs> easy, easy. Welcome to Second Opinion, the review show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Megan Griffin and Tim Lowe so we can talk about Limetown. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO62. Uh, alrighty, so Limetown is, I guess they've gone kind of multimedia at this point. It started off as a podcast, fiction, fictional podcast. Um, set in pretty much contemporary, contemporary USA. Um, but the big difference is that uh, there was a town where they were doing some like privately funded scientific research, very hush hush. Um, and there was some big catastrophe there. Uh, how long ago was that before the show happens? It was like fifteen. Years I think it's ten years. I think it's supposed to be two thousand five. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, pretty much everybody from the town, like, mysteriously disappeared. And uh, what we are following in the show, at least in season one, is uh, a radio reporter named Leah Haddock is investigating the whole thing um, because she has a personal connection to one of the residents of Limetown. Um, the, the show has had two seasons so far, uh, and they recently released a book that was, like, a prequel? Correct. Cool. I'm glad that I've got everything right. <laughs> I have only listened to the show. I've not read the book. Um, how about you guys? Oh, I've done all three. <laughs> yeah, I've done all three as well. Okay, cool. Um, so I think we can we can talk about all three of them for sure. Um, just so everybody knows, listeners, uh, we are going to structure this so that we'll have a spoiler-free discussion at the beginning, just to kind of help you, if you haven't listened to Limetown yet, to help you, you know, get a sense for whether or not you want to listen to it. Um, and then we'll give you plenty of warning and we will uh, transition into spoilers and talking more in depth about stuff. Um, so, Meg and Tim, are you guys yeah. ready? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. <laughs> So I think let's talk about kind of like the, the I mean, I guess the concept and the structure of the show is probably pretty important because um, they, they do lean pretty heavily on the whole like found footage trope that is co- quite prevalent in, uh, in audio dramas these days. Yeah, that was my first thought was I kind of fell out of audio dramas. Um, and this, the first season came out in 2015 where it was definitely like one of the first to kind of do this um Mm. and 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 play on that whole is it real is it not did i miss something in the news kind of thing Um, Uh, uh the war of the worlds kind of thingy yeah which are always super fun um so yeah by 2019 or 2018 when they released season two it was a little bit overdone but i do think they're one of the first i I always thought that was kind of something you can see that like the stories are kind of limited when they're trying to explain why it is that you would have heard it and they have to go through the the found footage and oh i host a podcast show and stuff and there are a couple other podcasts that i can think of where the better the story grows is the better that they grow out of that and realize that they Mm. don't have to necessarily be attached to that and i think that's one of the reasons that i like season two you know, they still give you reasons why you would be hearing what you're hearing in the story, but not why you would be hearing the story overall. Mm. See, I I kind of think of it a little bit differently. Um, I usually enjoy like the found footage trope more when that affects the framing of the story, which is much more the case in the first season when we're hearing everything through the lens of Leah Haddock, like reporting on it. Right. And so then her spin on things, her understanding of what's going on, then also becomes part of the story. Um, Whereas like in season two, where it's much more just like, oh, there happens to be a recorder happening at this place where this thing is is taking place then i'm like well what is even the point of having like the found footage thing you Uh, know and that's a good point 
and perhaps something that would be addressed in future seasons. But there's another there's a another local podcast to us called Tunnels, and it was sort of the same thing. You know, the first season is this is this found footage and this is my story, and then as it grows by the third season, they're just totally away from that. And I think that's the mm-hmm. only way you, you sort of limit yourself when you try to stay in that mold. Return yeah. into the uh, black tapes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, I th- Meg has some feelings about that one. Oh, uh, we yeah. both do. We yeah. both do. Did you ever yeah. listen to the Black Tapes podcast? I have I have not yet. Uh, stop after season two. That is my yep. only recommendation. Okay. Um, but no. Um, the, unless you but, like but that's, that's a review for another time. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a whole different thing. Um, I, re- like, I actually really enjoyed the found footage. Um, I don't know if you know, Ian, that season one was supposed to be seven episodes. So... Especially when what happens in season one happens and then suddenly they're not updating every other week and you're like, what's going on? It was a really, mm. really great cliffhanger. And I don't remember mm-hmm. if you were listening at that point either, Tim, or if you came in after. Yeah, I might have jumped on late on this one. It's pretty safe to assume that I jumped on late to just about anything. <laughs> <laughs> not a trendsetter. The second time, the first time I did it just like you did, Ian, I listened to the first season when it came out or shortly after, and then I listened to the second season as it came out. Mm -hmm. Then I did another listen through, and I listened to the prequel first, and then season one and season two, and I can tell you that is definitely not the way that you should should do that. Mm. Um, uh, Season one just sort of doesn't sit on its own as well when you have the information from the prequel, whereas the prequel adds a lot to season two so that prequel really should be done in the middle of the two seasons okay okay yeah i almost feel like in addition to like having the the episodes like appearing in order in your podcast player i almost feel like you should be able to force your podcast player to like okay i'm going to start this series give me each new episode with the time delay between them that they had <laughs> when they were first published, you know? So you want um, a week break between all of these. Well, I mean, if you're saying that that's like, was an important part of your experience with season one, yeah. then I mean, then we would be recording this three years from now when season two would have okay. finally rolled on to your. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's true. That's true. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe we can just have it. Do that. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do agree that, binging things and and our cultural tendencies to do so does take the magic out of some stuff and um i've listened to limetown I, th- I think this was my fourth or fifth time going through season one. Oh wow and um I, it's a quick and easy listen and uh i did it right before reading the prequel and i think i even re-listened to it after reading the prequel just to kind of get my bearings again um and right before season two started, so. On the flip side, I think that, like, listening to see If I had waited until season two was all complete and then added them all to my queue, I feel like I would have been able to remember the characters better. Because um, there are a lot of names of people who are not present in mm-hmm. the scenes that gets thrown around, and um, and when those when those episodes are a, a week or two, you know, spaced apart, uh, I have definitely forgotten a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of names that I only ever remember because they're actually so present in the sequel um, that mm. don't seem like they're that important. Or, I mean are important because you know there's mass hysteria and someone dies and but you get more of his background and and the prequel to the point where i'm like oh yeah okay i do know who this person is and yes and get a better grasp um but yeah no there are definitely a lot of names and there are a lot of times in this last i had to stop and be like who's talking hang on (laughs) because there there's at least one episode where someone's whole persona kind of changes and I was like, did I skip an episode or accidentally, like, start up another episode? And it's really just her entire persona just changes over the the entire episode. Hmm. So. Um, but it's still one of my favorite audio dramas. It's, it's definitely up there. Uh, season two is getting a lot of hate. And I think part of that is because there was a three-year delay. 
I thought it was because one of the creator's wives got sick, but I actually can't find anything on that. So I know there is a podcast that is super delayed because of that. The um, Leviathan Chronicles. Thank you. I knew yeah. it started with an L. I was like, which and one that's, is it? And that's been a long time. Yeah. Um, so I don't really know why this one was so super delayed, but I think it caused so many people to build up in their heads what they wanted. <laughs> and it was not what they got at all. And I think part of that has to do with the exactly what you were talking about, about how it became sort of a multimedia. You know, it went from a podcast to a book to a TV show that should be coming out soon, I think. They just ended filming. Oh, did it? Oh, okay. yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. On yeah, like a week face- ago or two. Facebook Watch or something like that, yep. I believe. But um, yeah, and I think that probably had something to do with all the delays. And I know that they even... Uh, apparently went back and changed some of season one and re-released it to make it fit better with all the other things that were going on. Yeah. Thanks, George Lucas. (laughs) (laughs) I met the creators. Uh, I went to the book signing um, and they, I gotta say, it's a lot of fun meeting podcast hosts. There's only been like one or two that I've been like, oh, I wish I hadn't met you. But these guys... (laughs) are so excited about like what they've produced and what's going on and we got to listen to um one of the off-season bonus episodes early which was super great and i don't there's just like you look at them and and it's kind of that i don't i don't know how many like s- creators or people that actually like i don't want to say celebrities because i feel like podcasters and and authors and that's usually who I meet aren't necessarily celebrities but you can tell when they've done it enough times that they're exhausted and these guys were just they were amazing they were a lot of fun so I think that's part of my like I will forgive anything because I can tell that you guys are putting everything you have into this so so a large part of especially like season one was kind of slowly revealing this mystery and different aspects of it over the course of the season like how, do you guys think that they did that at a reasonable pace at a you know did did they do a good job of of leading us along through this mystery i mean i think so because the moment they announced season two i was all eyes always waiting and uh at the end of each episode i was like ooh, i need more of that <laughs> so yeah I, I definitely think they did that's definitely a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's definitely a few that came out around that time where, like, the big reveal was going to be the thing. And Limetown is kind of the opposite of that. Like, by episode two or three, you kind of know what's going on. And uh, I was actually reading through Reddit and basically just re-familiarizing myself with everything. And someone said that they had to Google if Limetown was real and it was after the episode where, like, <laughs> the episode Napoleon, and someone was like, did, did you really think that episode was real? <laughs> <laughs> like, that didn't give you pause? And so um, I do like the way that it is kind of yeah. unfolded. Yeah, you get, like, sort of the top layer of the story right at the beginning, and then you get the, the, the underneath of that story sort of given to you as the rest of it goes. I also, like... So, since they do use the frame of like this is a, an investigative journalism, you know, kind of long running expose, um, which is a, a format of, of radio that I do not listen to very often. <laughs> I, I don't know how realistic that uh, portrayal was. I don't know that I've ever heard a serials, the only one I can think of. Well, yeah, yeah, serial, I guess, would be. Oh, yeah, that's true. And I guess that's probably I, where the format sort of is born out of for all of these yeah, these types of shows. Let's see, 2015. Oh, yeah, that was right after serial. Yeah. 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 So I think that's where a lot of it comes from. I, I, I mean, I don't. Most of my podcast listening is fiction. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> Most of mine is, here's the weekly tech news. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I do have my, like, weekly book news that I, I have to keep up on. And... <laughs> Uh, speaking of tech um there were some interesting like like they 
the thing that was being researched in Limetown was a very interesting, like, new technology. And, um, and, and the thing that I'm always interested in, especially in, like, works of fiction that, that are dealing with kind of a sci-fi bend is, like, are they using this to, as, as a lens to kind of talk about something in the real world, right? Um, and I, and I, I think they didn't really get to that until like season two. I agree. Um, when I, I feel like I should leave that a little yeah. bit more for the spoiler yeah. section. Um, so I guess, does anybody have any other non-spoiler things that they want to talk about before we get into the spoiler <laughs> section? Um, all the people in Limetown disappeared on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that, that uh, I... <laughs> Tim and I, I think we're talking about birthdays because we both have February yes. birthdays. We both hate our birthday. We yes. both think it's the worst day of the year. Uh-huh. And didn't even put together, because I think I was re-listening to Limetown or just finished or something. I was like, oh, yeah, you should listen to this. And <laughs> the response I got was like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely fits the theme for the the terror that my birthday has caused. <laughs> so what, what day is that? It's February 11th. <laughs> okay, and uh, what's your mother's maiden name? Oh, hey, hey, easy, <laughs> easy. And and what what street did you grow up on? <laughs> your your first animal if, or your first pet's name? There's you know what? I way mean, better just, people for you to steal that information from than me. Just give just give um, me your social security number already. Just <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I agree. <laughs> I feel like you're better with money than I am. So. <laughs> uh, okay, so. Here's your official warning, listeners. We're going to move into spoilers now. Cue the musical interlude. All right, we're on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Time to get into some spoilers. Um, so so the, the technology that they were developing in this town uh, was basically like, um, like Wi-Fi telepathy, right? <laughs> yeah, basically so- how can we even quicker get information across? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like from what straight from one brain into another. And I think they said that they it started with just like emotions, like raw emotions were able to be conveyed. Right. Um, and then um, they started off with like pigs and like one, one human subject who was able to like read the emotions of this pig. And I guess they did, they did have uh, a lot of him talking about like what that experience was like. Mm-hmm. But that, like, I don't, I, I couldn't think, I couldn't, I, I didn't feel like there was a real world analog for that, you know? <laughs> you could kind of apply it to any kind of, like, I mean, you could, the way we attach ourselves to cell phones, the way we attach ourselves to social media, it, it's kind of a loose, a loose fit on that, but that's the way it would appear to me. And the, yeah. the growth towards that, just the ever evolving reliance on the stuff. And the and the moment where that really clicked for me was in season two when they had the the, the kids uh, who were like essentially growing up with this technology present in their lives, and so they were u- learning how to use it in newer and more novel ways than the adults around them were, and you know like the adults were surprised that these kids were uh, able to block them out, you know, in certain ways and stuff, and I was like, ah. Yes, <laughs> just like kids and social media yeah. today, yes. and the adults who do not understand it. <laughs> that um, that was definitely the part of season two where I most went, "Oh, that's a terrible idea," but you very <laughs> much understand it based on the effects of season one and why things went badly there. Well, it was because people got separated out. So now in season two, he doesn't want people separated out, so he swings to the other extreme. Right. And it's just like even this little baby's gonna get this this technology and really has no business having it. And the fact that they give it to kids without having some kind of like blocker set, so these kids are experiencing yeah. adult emotions that they cannot actually process mm-hmm. in a I think it's a group of thirty for the second town, who aren't necessarily vetted properly. Like we have no idea what these kids are experiencing. Right. Um and they have no, uh, they can internalize some of it and they can understand some of it, but like to the point where they cannot vocalize their own frustration or emotions at all. And it's kind of terrifying. Mm-hmm. 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 They can't, they've learned so much to rely on that technology that they can't live without it. 
Yeah. And and also like the the fact that um I, correct me if I'm misremembering this but like you know the the kids are being exposed to like the thoughts and emotions of the adults around them as well because the, like you know the the transmitters are just you know transmitting what's in your mind and right. like and so that seemed like a a perfect analogy for like well if you just like let kids just go online and do whatever they're gonna find the deepest darkest corners Mm -hmm. and you know the adults who are there in those forums or whatever are talking to each other just like not thinking about the fact that there might be kids lurking about and you know it was seeing what their problem in season one and in season two was talking about that that filtering the Mm -hmm. message that you directly want to get or filtering the message that you want to receive Mm -hmm. you know not being able to stop everything from coming through yeah yeah um i guess uh this kind of begs the question like out of the the three of us do any of us have kids yes Tim does. I, yeah okay yeah because because i like i have no intention of ever having children and like this is one of the reasons is because <laughs> like i don't i don't want to have to deal with like even thinking about oh how am i going like what kind of limitations are reasonable ones to put on a kid who's living up in a, in a technological world um <laughs> it's amazing how much they grasp quicker than I ever could. Just the concepts of this stuff would have just mauled me at their age, but they're just they pick it up like it's nothing because they're so in tune with it. But there's a lot of ways to filter out what they they get. Like there's there's YouTube, but then there's YouTube for kids where they only have access to certain but are you certain. sure that your son is only watching YouTube no. for kids? No, I'm very certain that he's not based on some of the things that he's come up with. I'm sure some of those things have snuck through. There's no way to completely filter out anything. And it is, it's yeah. super easy access to all of this stuff. So you just do the best you can with it. But I have younger siblings that are, they're just now teenagers. And uh, my, my brother asked to see some movie that was rated R. And my mom was like, it's funny that he's asking. I don't block anything on Netflix. You can go watch whatever he wants. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, it is interesting to see what kind of, who gravitates towards what. I, Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, I feel like there there isn't a whole lot of, like, direct action in this show, right? It's mostly... What do you mean? It's, it's mo- like, it's mo- like, like, we don't, I mean... You know, we don't have any like f- fight scenes for the most part, and st- you know stuff like that. It's it's you know it's, after the fact it's dialogue stuff. driven. Yeah, it's, it is yeah. very dialogue driven. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's uh, recapping stuff, which is you know that's that's totally fine because that's uh, probably the most difficult thing to do in a uh, in an audio medium. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, I really want quick when I go back. Season two definitely discusses like the the development of kids and uh yeah and things like that but it also especially towards the end um i think is a really good metaphor for like the mass hysteria that we have going on with like um information that isn't uh verified and things like that i mean we've got the uh-huh. whole glass joe and and the dad daniel who keeps going but they're just kids like their worries can't be that big of a deal but these kids are doing exactly what I did as a kid, which is reading urban legends and, and horror stories and just like having them go around in my head and becoming worse and worse and then telling my younger siblings about them and just to scare them until it is, you know, an actual issue because all the kids end up dying, <laughs> you know, trying to get away from Glass Joe. Oh, my God. Glass Joe is Momo. Yes. Glass in Joe fact, is Momo. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I remember when glass joe first came everybody was like please tell me we're not going with like and now there's some demon yeah in the show (laughs) or uh something like that and i think it actually is really handled really well as something that like we don't acknowledge as being an issue as much as we really should yeah man i definitely should have and this is probably a habit that i need to get into more for you know when i'm consuming a piece of media as it comes out um getting more into like finding the online communities that are discussing (laughs) this particular thing because yeah like you know i would i would listen to an episode of limetown on my commute and then like wouldn't really think about it again until the next week when the next episode comes out (laughs) yeah you know (laughs) there's Um, there's pluses and minuses to that there's 
good yeah. groups of fans and there are bad groups yeah. of fans so they can they can easily play up all the negativity and and take some of the joy out of what you're listening to sure okay so, so what you're saying is maybe i should find uh, a discord with a few <laughs> people there you go <laughs> What you need is a Tim in your life who just do not hate anything so that you can talk to him and be like, I like this oh, thing. Like, and then he's like, you're being too negative. Stop. See, like 85% of the media I get in my life, I get straight from Megan. That's like, so sad. Hey, That's this so is sad. good. Yeah, this is good. You'd like this. And then, you know, I say whatever. And then two years later, I do it. And I was like, hey, you were right. <laughs> this was really good. <laughs> And then she questions why I don't listen to her sooner, and I don't have a good answer for that. I was going to say that, but I was thinking <laughs> it again. <laughs> you used to stay on track when I did. I did. I, but... it's, me and on track don't normally go hand to hand. That's very true. Hand in hand. Hand to hand. Yeah, they're in combat. <laughs> That's it. Uh, okay. Um, anything else from Limetown that we want to talk about? Let's go over the prequel, just kind of briefly. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so the book is told from two points of view. It is Leah, uh, roughly around the time that she's graduating high school. And uh, mm-hmm. um, I just forgot her uncle's name. Emil. Emil, thank you. I was like, it's not Emmanuel, but that's all that's <laughs> coming up. Uh, Emil, in his senior year, we get like a really deep dive into being into his head when he... Because he can hear everybody's thought. He doesn't need the chip or the contact as it becomes later. He just hears everything. And yeah, he's kind of the basis of all of this. Yeah. Um, but it kind of goes through both of them. Leah's is just after Limetown happens. Um, and kind of how her mother falls apart. Her family kind of falls apart, which causes her to fall apart. Because her mom disappears, basically, for a couple weeks because she's trying to find Emil, and Leah never gets over it. And then Emil goes through him kind of floundering about until he gets put with an organization that kind of seems to be doing really well. And then I don't want to get too spoilery, because I know you haven't read it to Ian. I don't yeah. know if you actually have an interest in reading it. Uh, if there's an audiobook available of it, I probably will. If there is Tim an read audiobook. it, there is. Yes, there, <laughs> there is an audiobook available. Nice. Um, but it, I will say that it doesn't stand on its own. If you're not a fan of the podcast, it doesn't bring much to the table that you're going to enjoy. Um, and the ending is incredibly rushed, or at least it was for the, uh, arc I read. Yeah, that was the, the thought I had reading it was there was no way that this book would stand alone on its own. It sort of cleans itself up by the end and turns itself into a complete story, but not really ever does it feel that way. With the two seasons of Limetown, it makes for a pretty good addition to the story, though. But definitely don't do it before season one, because no, then season no. one feels all kinds of weird, because it's like, well, she should at least be familiar with some of this. Yeah, there's mm. like a weird retcon that happens yeah. that doesn't get explained. Yeah. And... uh but I feel like season two makes more sense if you've read it. It absolutely does. So It absolutely does. Yeah, and the, the book came out right before season two? Yes. Partway through season two? Something it, like that? They, I think it, it was right before. It came out the week before. There, There's the bonus episode where the little girl... Well, we've lost me already. So <laughs> there's the bonus episode where we learn about Glass Joe for the first time. Yeah. That. Okay, so like, like halfway, three quarters of the way through season two? Something like that? Something like that. I feel like it's four episodes in, but I don't I have a clue how long, actually. Anyways, um, that's the episode we listened to, the, like, advanced spoiler that we got. So whatever episode was before that was the week it came out. So it came out shortly after season two started. That's my long, okay. long, long yeah. way around to getting to that point. Um, and my, yeah, my, my general rule is... Consumes, consume a series in the order that it was released, not in the order that it happens chronologically Absolutely. within the universe. Agreed. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. Okay, good. My uh, my library has the Limetown uh, novel as an audiobook. I'll place a hold on that. I'll Just get around to it in like 20 weeks. The question <laughs> I have, and I don't know if Tim will remember, but Ian, when you finally get the book, let me know. There's a character named Robin that shows up like three quarters of the way through. I need to know 
what their pronouns are because I swear to God, the copy <laughs> I have, it switches every sentence. Oh. <laughs> I was just, I had, I had an advanced copy, so I, their mistakes are expected, but I was just like, who is this version supposed to be? <laughs> what picture a, am I supposed to have in my head? I don't know if you remember this too, that there was a point where I texted you because I had a question. Um, there was a character named in Emile's early life who comes, and then there's a character with the same name who comes up in Leah's sort yes. of high school life. And I was very curious if that was intended to be the same person. The teacher? Uh, a guy named Art. Do you remember this? He was a doctor. I don't. Oh, okay. He was one of the kids that was around Emil when he was at, when the terrible a thing that happens to him. couple of, oh, is he the one that gets beaten up? No, he's one of the ones that was there initially. Oh, yeah. Everybody that, yeah, that they're all, it's the same person. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah I couldn't. It's supposed to be a small town. Sorry. That's me. Losing focus again, but. <laughs> um, I love it how we're in the spoiler section, but the two of you are still trying to like kind of talk around <laughs> oh, the, the terrible well, thing let me that tell happens. You, at the very, very end of season two, I'm not going to talk about on this podcast, but I fully intend on asking you both about it. Because everybody should listen to season one and season two, and then they should t- like find me and ask me about the end of it, and we can have a discussion about the uh, way this this series ends. Uh, do you think it's over? Oh no no no, sure no 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 okay where the where the where the season ends excuse me oh, okay because it's it there's a lot of ways to interpret what happens and that's that's all yeah. I'll say on it. Um, <laughs> the book focuses more also so we have a meal and obviously he can read minds. There in season two, uh, especially, we hear more about how I was about to call her Claire, Alice, Allison, Allison. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And Leah both have prophetic dreams, and mm-hmm. these aren't the only. They're not superpowers. I don't know what they are called in this world uh, that show up in the book. So, yeah, and that um, there are a couple of people who are exempt from Emil's mind reading ability. And that tends to cause him a little bit of frustration. So you've got... I can imagine. Yeah, yeah. You've got a, a kind of... Yeah, I guess, what would you call superpowers when they're not really <laughs> defined that way? I don't know. EOs? EOs, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, do you guys think Emil is a good guy? No. Like, this time around... Which one's O'Neal? Uh, Emil. 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 The, the oh, uncle. Emil. Yeah. No, no, I don't think he's a good guy at all. I would have said so maybe after season one and after the prequel. But after season two, I definitely don't. I, I mean, after coming out of Limetown, I just feel like nobody's a good person. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty fair yeah. and accurate statement. Yeah. I feel really icky saying that yeah. now. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Thanks for making me think about it real hard, Megan. <laughs> Sorry, it was the question I had this last time around when I was listening to season two and I was like... I don't know if I think Emile's a good person or not. No, no, no. no. Um, my favorite character was Max Finlayson. I don't Is know if you the guy know. from season one that was just like, yeah, I'm going to tell you everything. I don't yep. care. <laughs> yep. yep. And he was a, a, a sort of a big player in the prequel. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, easily just like the most like, I like that dude. He knew his time was coming up. So. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Oh. <laughs> so no mind reading? No mind reading for either of you? I, you know, it's funny. Earlier this week, I was kind of like, just kind of fantasizing about like, what if I had like a really useless superpower? Like, for example, if I could like read other people's minds, but I didn't realize that I could actually read other people's (laughs) minds. Because, you know, every once in a while you have that, like a a thought where you're like, what if that other person is thinking such and such a thing? Yeah. And like, what if, what if every time I had that thought that it was accurate, but I just did, I, I don't actually realize that I. See, that's so, the book you should write. The, uh, the ability to read minds plus self-crippling doubt. <laughs> oh, that that's sounds like it would be Tim's me. Life. <laughs> you, you could accurately predict the future, but you just didn't believe that you could anytime you did it. <laughs> To be like, oh no, it's that's not what's gonna it's happen. Just a that oh my, I mean that's that's like the most like on the spectrum superpower that I can think <laughs> of. Like, <laughs> I can perfectly read other people, but I don't think that I can read other people. <laughs> 
superpowers in a millennial world. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Lord. (laughs) So, um, yeah, I think when it comes right down to it, I think this is definitely a good series to go and listen to. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you're just getting into the whole uh, audio drama you know, there's there's not a lot of it to take in, and there's there's multiple levels to it. If you want it to be longer than it is, you can go get the prequel. But I I just really enjoy uh, the, the same thing. It was Megan who made me listen to We Are Alive, and that's really got where this whole audio drama obsession, I guess you could say, started. Uh, just you know, full casts and 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 production value. Mm-hmm. I, I just I enjoy it a very, lot. Very good cast. Yes, yeah. very good. Yeah, very good cast. And the fact that in the end of season two, they actually like go through the cast list and the writers list and all that stuff. I was, I, I appreciated that yep. quite a bit. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I definitely, I, I definitely have other fictional podcasts that I like better than Limetown. Sure. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's not a bad one. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> what genre, which one, which one's your favorite? Uh, wooden overcoats, which is a, a very, very different genre than this. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a, it's a comedy. Oh, okay. Uh, it's, it's a British sitcom. So it's <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> that is about as different as you can get. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I told you that yeah, I that's... listened to tunnels because it was sort of the same, you know, thing. And it was, it was a, a guy just kind of starting out and you could see the growth through it. Well, they have audio drama Sundays where they would list out just a slew of other audio dramas. So I have so much ah. stuff that I have to get through <laughs> that has been mentioned on that. And I've heard a couple that that's been mentioned on that show mentioned in several other places as being very good. So, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the nature of the, the podcasting beast is, you know, it's still very much like the, the blogosphere yeah. from the early two thousands where like, how do you find out about other blogs that you might want to listen or read, uh, you know, a, di- a blogger that you already read yeah. mentioned it and Absolutely. said that this is worth checking out. Um, so with that in mind, <laughs> where can people find you two on the internet? Do you see how good I teed that one up for him? That was awesome. <laughs> You want to take this one, Meg? Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you want to find both Tim and me, we co-host a podcast called Minds at Yerk, which is a bi-weekly podcast where we reread the Animorphs book series from the 90s. Uh, more as to see, did it hold up? And now just to see Tim's predictions, I think. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't yeah, get to read Yeah, because Tim's the odd one yeah. out who has not read it yes. before. Yeah. That being said... Jenna and Alex mostly don't remember the series. <laughs> it's kind of sometimes I say things and Alex is like, "Nope, did not remember that." I'm like, "All right, cool." <laughs> uh, and I definitely, definitely recommend Minds at Yerk because I am one of your most avid listeners, and uh, the, the 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 podcast has has like inspired me to not only keep up with reading the animorph series as we go but also uh start a twitter account where i post like out of <laughs> yes. context quotes from the book series which is amazing by the yes. way it's, i love, I love it it's, I, I turned to i turned to my wife the other evening and i was like this is my favorite job and she was like this isn't a job and i'm like it, it is to me <laughs> but it is <laughs> uh but on top of that, I host three other podcasts, Judging Book Covers, uh, Fabulous Retellings, and Handbook Podcast. So if you want anything kind of book-related, that's where I'm at. There's also a special episode of Judging Book Covers coming up very <laughs> shortly. One with me on it. Hey! <laughs> I was like, am I supposed to pick that up? Yeah. I was worried you were going to say the 50th episode. I'm like, no, 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 not that one. The one that I'm on. <laughs> yes, our 49th episode, which is <laughs> also the uh, anniversary episode Tim is on yes. every year uh, to signify that I have made it through another year <laughs> and Stephanie has not killed me. So <laughs> it's always good. Yeah, we're going to talk about a good, good book this time. And I'm excited about it. Awesome. Uh, and I am Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. Um, this 
show, Second Opinion Reviews, is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to use anything that we said in here uh, in any way that you want, as long as you link back to the original page, which, once again, is thenexus.tv slash SO62. Um, if you would like to discuss this review, um, maybe you've listened to Limetown and you want to talk about your thoughts, uh, why don't you head on over to our subreddit at r, or reddit.com slash r slash the Nexus TV. Uh, and if you have the means to support us financially as we continue to make technology focused podcasts, uh, hit up our Patreon at patreon.com slash the Nexus TV. Thanks for listening, everybody. And until next time, have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence. Technology is ever evolving. It touches every part of our lives, both influencing and being influenced by society. I'm Ian Arbuck, and I know it's hard to stay on top of everything you need to know to live in this digital world. That's why, every month on The Extra Dimension, we explore a different aspect of the technological convergence. Find it on our website, thenexus.tv, or by searching for The Extra Dimension in your favorite podcast player.